Shopify stock. Okay, this is another one of those situations that has been pummeled down by this market. Let me show you. Shopify stock down rapidly over the past few days. Today, down 4.18% in the space of a single day over the past one month. Slightly up, but over the past six months, down 59.32%. Very, very aggressive. But that's indicative of the underlying nature of this business. So many people asking me, why is Shopify down? If Shopify is such a high quality company, such a firmly entrenched high quality business, why is it selling down? Well, what we need to think about is the underlying nature of the business. What type of business is Shopify relative to the market more broadly right now? And this is very similar to what I was saying about AMD. This is a high growth company, a company with a large degree of growth predication pricing going forward. And what has been punished by the market over the past six months, over the past year, what has been punished by the market? It has been companies like this. Companies that investors during 2020, during 2021 pumped up as if they're going to continue winning, continue growing aggressively. But when that growth faltered, and more importantly, when rates were raised, we saw that downturn in valuation. When rates were raised and when the Fed was coming out, Jerome Powell was saying, we're increasing rates now. That's when we started to see that decline. The euphoria ran away. The irrational exuberance around this company pulled back. And what do we see? we saw a decline of 65.725% from its high. Naturally, that happens. Things like this happen in marketplaces. When you have that much euphoria around a company, when you have such a substantial run-up so quickly from 2020, up over 263% from its 2020 price, obviously it's going to happen. Obviously you're going to see it. But what about the company on a fundamental level? How has it been effective? Is it still an advantageous buy? That's the question I get asked. And when you look at the company and you remove yourself from the euphoria, from the fear, from the doubt around it, and you actually look at it on a tangible, fundamental level, there is some variability. There is still some doubt with the growth assumptions. But overall, this company doesn't deserve to be down 70% in value. When you evaluate the business on a fundamental level, look at the financial strength, look at the profitability, you begin to realize this may actually be a fairly advantageous buy. And let's start with financial strength. There's a tremendous degree of financial strength still exuded by this company. A cash to debt ratio of 6.26. Massive amount of cash on hand relative to debt. If you believe a recession is coming, if you believe recessionary fears, recessionary pressures will ensue over the next 12 months or so, then that massive amount of cash on hand is going to help you out. Provide the company with financial stability in the event of that downturn, in the event that bad things begin to happen. Massive amount of cash on hand, healthy equity assets, not only healthy, but extremely high equity assets of 0.84. Large degree of financial stability with the business, and that's reflected in the high Altman score they're holding. An Altman score of 22.46, an immense degree of safety exuded by this company, a large degree of financial entrenchment, and that's not only to do with the financial strength, it's also to do with the underlying nature of their business. Think about the nature of Shopify's business. A subscription-based e-commerce infrastructure play. This is the underlying foundation of so many e-commerce businesses. Are they going to cancel their Shopify subscription in the event of a downturn, in the event of a recession, if the business goes under? Yes. But by and large, this Shopify subscription, this foundation for their company, this is one of the very last things they're going to give up. Because it's crucial to marketing their business online. It's crucial to bring in those digital sales, conducting Digital commerce, almost essential. And a product with that nature, that underlying entrenchment and necessity to business owners, that's not going away recession or otherwise. A firmly entrenched product, a large degree of quality, not only in the underlying product, but also in the business as a whole, exuded by these financial strength metrics. And you may talk about profitability. Yes, it's a financially strong business, Lockie, but how profitable is it? You know, growing companies, oftentimes we see negative margins or very low margins. What do we see with Shopify? Let's check it out. Operating margins of 5.74%, historically the best for the company. And this is where the confusion comes in. Net margins of 62% relative to those operating margins of 5%. Why is there such a big differential between the operating margins and net margins of the company? Why such a big difference? Well, a large degree of those net margins are indicative of one-time gains. Increased value in the investments made by Shopify rather than operational earnings exuded by the company. I believe over the long term, there is, there is a potential for fantastic margins exuded by this company simply given the underlying nature of its business. 
A low capital cost business, I believe over the long term, margins around 25, 30% wouldn't be unreasonable for this company, both on an operational level and a net margin level. But right now, ignore this high net margin figure. It is simply indicative of one-time gains and not indicative of the actual operational performance of the business. When assessing the operational performance of the business, how profitable this company is on a realistic level, you should probably be looking at that operating margin level. Operating margins are 5.74%, still fairly attractive historically for the company and going forward with room for more margin growth, more margin expansion, it proves a pretty advantageous profitability bet. Growing companies, you need to give them time. Growing companies such as Shopify, you need to give them time to build up that profitability. It won't be there right away. And so if you have patience, if you have disciplines, discipline as a long-term investor, then I believe you can get that profitability over the long term. Ignore the net margins, focus on the operating margins, which are still fairly impressive. Now, if we come down here, and if we, we have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets, we notice that despite the struggles this company is supposedly facing, despite potentially the lack of managerial acumen people have been stipulating around this company, look at the returns on equity. Returns on equity of 29.94%. On an industry basis, the very best. On a historical basis, the very best. And returns on assets... It's the same story. This indicates not only that tremendous degree of underlying quality in their business model in relation to Shopify, but also the managerial quality. How good the managers are within Shopify allocating their capital to generate very, very high returns on equity and returns on assets over time. Very, very appealing business on a profitability basis and on a financial strength basis. Firmly entrenched with the potential for growth going forward. So people ask me, what do you think about Shopify? I like it. I think it's attractive, but the valuation, that's the issue. People can ask about valuation. What do you think about valuation? Is it cheap? Is it expensive? What price should we be buying at? Well, let's investigate. Let's value this company on an earnings per share basis. Let's price in some reasonable growth going forward now. Given the recent IPO of Shopify, we don't have earnings per share data over the past 10, 5, or 1 year period. What we do have is only that 1 year figure. A one-year growth figure of, and brace yourself, 783.4%. So massive growth taking place over the past one year. Tremendous growth exuded by this company and naturally tied to the increased demand for their product during the pandemic. Naturally, businesses made an online transition and so Shopify services became more prevalent. That's reflected in that higher growth rate. Understandable. Can that growth perpetuate going forward? Will they continue to grow at 700% every single year for the next decade? Absolutely not. That growth rate is far, far too high. And I think a more reasonable growth rate for the company, given the secular trends around their business, the potential for the growth going forward. And yes, they have had high earnings recently, but I think growth can perpetuate going forward. I think given the nature of their business, given the quality of their management, something around a 25% growth rate would not be unjustified for the company going forward. You may say that's too high. You may say 25% growth seems unreasonable, but bear in mind, this is only a $73 billion company, a company with positive secular trends encompassing the business, massive potential for growth going forward. So a 25% rate of growth, I don't think it's unrealistic. If we price in 25% growth going forward, and you may want to up your discount rate, we've been using a discount rate of 9%, but the Fed is increasing rate, so let's say a discount rate of 10% going forward. Well, with a 25% growth rate, a 10% discount rate, and then an earnings per share figure of $22.89, look at the price target. A price target of $1,105.76. Relative to the current trading price of Shopify, around $582, looks like a pretty advantageous buy. Looks like a pretty positive buying opportunity, a massive discount to its intrinsic value. But there is a caveat. There is something that would stop you from buying this company, and that is the time it's going to take to realize that value. Think about the marketplace more broadly right now. Recessionary pressures, inflation, increasing rates. Naturally, growth stocks are going to continue to see a large degree of volatility. Going to continue to see ups and downs, sways in price. So if you're not ready for that, if you're not ready for movements in price at a violent degree, then don't buy it. Don't buy into this company because we're going to continue to see these ups and downs in the stock price as we've been seeing over the past few months. Continued declines, massive movements around. This is what I think we're going to keep seeing. But over the long term, if you have the discipline to, to buy into the company with a long-term perspective, and a long-term perspective, by the way, I'm talking five years minimum, 
10 years, 15 years, that type of long-term lens. If you can buy them with that idea, I think this type of company is probably the way to go. There's an advantageous buying opportunity here, clearly undervalued, and I think over the long term, a very advantageous buy. Fundamentals are there, financial strength, profitability, undervalued based upon a variety of metrics. This to me is a pretty advantageous buy, but it requires patience and it requires an adherence to those underlying value investing principles. So if you can do that, if you can be patient with a company like this, then I'd say it's a pretty advantageous long-term hold. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope to give you an insight into my thoughts on Shopify right now, how I see the business relative to the market as a whole, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.